two, one. Good morning and welcome to another day of Meet Your Future campaign on National Apprenticeship Week 2022. I'm Claire Walker and I'm part of the Bridge GM team at Greater Manchester Combined Authority. Meet Your Future was launched in April 2019 to enable more young people like you to meet with and have meaningful conversations with employers whilst experiencing different workplaces. Over the past 12 months, we've been speaking with young people from all the 10 boroughs across Greater Manchester to find out how you are feeling and how you feel you should be supported now and going into your future. We've been listening and we've learned lots. As a consequence of that, we've developed a suite of information, resources and services that are there to help you. These can be found on GMAX and my colleague's just going to pop the GMAX link into the chat here for you to see. GMAX stands for Greater Manchester Application and Career Service, which many of you will already be know about and be familiar with. If not, do please speak to your careers leader or your careers teacher in school to find out a little bit more. We've also adapted the Meet Your Future campaign to better fit what you've all been telling us. Throughout this academic year, you and other young people will have had the opportunity to engage with a range of sessions from employers, national employers and also local employers representing growth sectors across Greater Manchester. And you'll have been hearing about the various pathways and careers opportunities and possibilities in the future that are available to you right on your doorstep in Greater Manchester. As you might already know, February is it's United Kingdom LGBTQ plus month in 2022. In the session this morning, you're going to hear from Jax Effiong, who is from Greater Manchester Combined Authority and Greater Manchester Fire Service. She is a lead on equality, diversity, inclusion in the workplace. Jax will be talking us through pride in the workplace, which is really important, and she's prepared a fantastic presentation to take us through. There will be some opportunities at the end of the session when Jax has finished the presentation, for some questions and answers. So do please put any questions that you've got as Jax is going through her presentation and you think of them, and we'll do our very best to get through as many of them as possible when Jax has finished. I'm really hopeful that the session is going to inform you and inspire you all and show you why you should be hopeful and optimistic about your futures and all the wonderful possibilities and opportunities that we have in Greater Manchester. So without further ado, I'm delighted to introduce you to Jas Effiong and over to you. Thanks, Jax. Hi, good morning, everybody. Yes, um, I'm Jax Effiong. My pronouns are she and her, and I'm the Equality, Diversity and Inclusion Manager for the Combined Authority with a real focus on Grant and Manchester Fire and Rescue Service. Uh, next slide, please. So this just shows um, you can see the emblem there that um, we share with employees uh, for Great Match Fire and Rescue Service. You can see our corporate brand and we've put the colours inside and we use that as our inclusivity pin across the organisation. Next slide, please. So what are we going to be talking about today? Some of the information about my role as an EDI manager, so short under quality, diversity and inclusion to EDI. And um, one of my roles around supporting staff networks, some information about pronouns and terminology. Then we'll go into um, some LGBTQ plus history, legal equality, some influential influential figures, social change, LGBTQ experiences today. Fire safety in the home, of course, and allyship. And you'll see the picture there is from a school in Ramsbottom. And um, they had a session earlier in the week around celebrating LGBT History Month with our local fire station in Ramsbottom. Next slide, please. One of my roles is around supporting our power staff networks. And just a little bit about my journey with staff networks. I joined the Fire and Rescue Service 11 years ago. And at that time, there were no staff networks in the organisation. And I'd come from a youth and community work background where I was very active uh, across our LGBTQ plus community in Greater Manchester. And so five years into my journey in, in my role, I established the first LGBTQ plus and ally staff network. That's extremely established now with two vice chairs, um, two leads and a range of members that attend on a regular basis. So one of my core roles now 
is to support the ever growing staff networks across the combined authority and Greater Manchester Fire and Rescue Service. So we have a rainbow staff network for employees and volunteers who identify as lesbian, gay, bi, trans, queer and questioning, intersex and ace. We have a RISE staff network for employees and volunteers supporting race and faith equality in the workplace. We have the new established disability staff network for employees and volunteers supporting equal access in the workplace for physical and hidden disabilities. We launched our first women's staff network on International Women's Day last year, and that's our Greater Manchester Women's in Success support staff network. And also recently, we launched our Active Allies network, and we call them our e um, EDI single points of contact. And this is for members who really want to shape equality across the service that supports the work we do across our communities in Greater Manchester. Next slide, please. You would have noticed that I introduced myself with my pronouns, she and her. Now we find that it's really, really important in our LGBTQ plus family because some people don't feel like traditional gender pronouns actually fit their gender identity. So for trans, non-binary, gender fluid and other gender variant people may choose different pronouns for themselves and we really want to respect that. It normalises discussion about gender and it's a conversation that benefits all of us. And first and foremost, it really welcomes everyone to our service. So that's something to think about for yourselves going forward. Next slide, please. I wanted to talk a little bit about terminology because there's so many letters when we talk about LGBT History Month or LGBTQIA. So I just wanted to do a reminder about some of the key terminology and you might actually know a lot more terminology as well. But I've started with lesbian. So this refers to women who have a romantic, emotional or sexual orientation towards other women. Some non-binary people may also identify with this term. Gay. So what does gay refer to? It refers to a man who has a romantic, emotional or sexual orientation towards men. Also, it's a generic term for lesbian and gay sexuality. So some women and non-binary people use the term gay. And bi is an umbrella term. Um, some people use the term bisexual. And it's used to describe a romantic or a sexual orientation towards more than one gender. And trans again is an umbrella term to describe people whose gender is not the same as or does not sit comfortably with the sex they were assigned at birth. And queer is often used as a more fluid term to describe someone's romantic, sexual or emotional attraction to others. Queer can still be used as a slur, but it is being reclaimed in the LGBTQ plus community. The plus so what does the plus stand for? It's used to express the inclusion of a broad range of identities held by people in our community. For example, intersex, asexual, aromantic and two-spirited. And if I had more time this morning, I would really go into all of those identities and we could have a discussion about that. Next slide, please. So LGBTQ plus history month, it originated in American schools and it's now celebrated in countries around the world, including Australia, Canada, Brazil and Greenland. And in the UK, the movement was led by Schools Out, a wonderful organisation that celebrated and implemented it in February each year to commemorate and uh, remember Section 28. So I just wanted you to see, can you remember when it was introduced in the UK, LGBT History Month? If you can use the chat box, what date do you think LGBT History Month was introduced in the UK? I'm just keeping an eye here to see as the, um, the answers hopefully come in, Jack, so I'll let you know. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we just need a few. I just wanted to see if anyone could have a guess. When did we start celebrating LGBTQ plus month? Well, I'll let you think about that for now, but I'll just show you who introduced it 
and what year we started looking at LGBT History Month. Next slide as well, please. So this was introduced by Sue Sanders and Paul Patrick, who were teachers, and they founded LGBT History Month in 2005 in the UK. So we've actually been celebrating for many years now. And they introduced it on the back of Black History Month that had actually been recently introduced in schools and had been so successful that after Section 28, they really wanted to educate and increase awareness around LGBT communities uh, in, in the UK. And one, one of the strap lines that I think is really powerful is that LGBT History Month is about claiming our past, celebrating our present and creating our future. And that's really important to have that future vision for you as young people. Next slide, please. So why is LGBT History Month important and why is it important to me? And I think it's really important. One, one of our um, key ambitions is that everybody can bring their whole selves to the workplace every day for that job satisfaction and for that productivity. So for me, Section, eight, section um, 28 had a massive impact. And this is why some of the teachers really wanted to look at celebrating LGBT History Month. Section 28 was introduced in 1988 to 2003. And that's well over 13 years. And I can remember coming out at the age of 19 and actually the first experience uh, for me as a young person was section 28 that was waiting for me around the corner. It happened two years later and it had a huge impact on my life and it had a huge impact on many others. But what is section 28? It actually instructs the schools not to intentionally promote homosexuality or to publish any materials um, that intentionally promoted homosexuality. So actually what, what, what it did is actually um, close the voices and made LGBT people invisible in schools and in other educational establishments. So you could have been reading books by authors and actually you wouldn't have known anything about if they were LGBT or not. And many teachers went back in the closet uh, and didn't um, promote LGBT uh, history in fear of losing their roles. Next slide, please. Just say some of the photographs, if you just go back to the next slide, I just want to, um, what I wanted to say is that little uh, photographs there, uh, the person with the funky shades on is me. And that's me at Manchester Polytechnic many, many years ago. Uh, and we actually was designing uh, a banner to go and march against Section 28 in Piccadilly in Manchester. So that's me with some of my colleagues on the Youth and Community Work uh, degree at Manchester Polytechnic many years ago, and it's now called uh, Manchester Metropolitan University. Next slide, please. So legal equality. When was legal equality introduced to actually help and support L our LGBTQ plus family? So we've got equal adoption rights for same gender couples. We've got Equality Act in England, Scotland and Wales. We've got the decriminalisation of consensual homosexual acts between men in England and Wales. The Gender Recognition Act, actually to support people who identified as trans. The age of consent for gay and bi men, when was that equalised? And equal marriage in England and Wales. And I would, if, if we were in person, I would be saying, what dates do you think these happened in? What dates um, did we get legal equality for some of these acts? Um, but I'm just going to pop them up. Um, so if you can just click the buttons for me with the dates, that'd be great. So you can see equal adoption was uh, introduced in 2002. The Equality Act, which you may have actually studied already, was introduced in 2010. And that actually captures um, equal um, rights um, that public sets have to follow for protected groups uh, in England, Scotland and Wales and sexual orientation and um, transgender rights are under the equality rights. 
Now you'll see that the decriminalisation of homosexual acts between men in England and Wales, it was actually introduced in 1967. So that was quite a long time ago. And if you click the other three buttons, you'll see that actually all the other equality rights actually was introduced when we hit the millennium. So actually in the 2000s. So you can see actually there was a large gap uh, before we started introducing lots of other uh, legal equality for our LGBTQ plus community. And what's important is you can see there's a huge drive in the current time um, to drive forward equality. And you'll see there, this, this is me celebrating my multi-faith wedding. I actually had my wedding as a civil partnership in 2011. And there was a catcher. Once we actually had uh, equal rights um, to marry, we could upgrade, as you like, our certificate. So we didn't have to have another huge wedding for our family and friends. We could actually just upgrade, but we did have another party as well. <laughs> Great excuse for a party. <laughs> and you can see it's a multi faith wedding because we have different faiths in our family household. So our faiths are Hinduism and also um, Roman Catholic. So we had a multi-faith wedding with our family and friends. And I don't know if anyone knows Ashton Underline, uh, but we celebrated and had our wedding on Hartshead Pike, um, which was the first uh, legal wedding um, established. We couldn't find another one in history. So we were very, very proud of that in 2011. Next slide, please. So these are some influential figures, but you may have other role models and some other influential figures that you know from our LGBTQ plus uh, family. So I just wondered if you'd recognise some of these um, really influential figures that have strived forward um, and, and, and led the way for equality for our community. The first picture you may notice, you may recognise, um, and we'll just pop up on the slides if that's OK. So this is Elliot Page, who was a Canadian actor and producer. And Elliot came out as trans only a couple of years ago and is really influential in the trans and non-binary community in speaking out for the rights of trans and non-binary young people across the world. And a lot of people follow Elliot on his journey um, around their transition. Um, from female to male and it's a very powerful story so if you do get a chance please research Elliot um, as a young person of, of powerful change uh, for our community. Next please is Marsha P Johnson and you may have heard of Marsha. Marsha was very influential, influential in the Stonewall riots in America uh, which led the way for an organisation called Stonewall UK and Marsha and many others really started fighting um, back against um, the government and the police around the oppression of our LGBT community well over 50 years ago now. Um, so again, another very influential figure. And next one, please, is Alicia Garza. And you may know Alicia Garza already, who's so famous now for actually introducing the words Black Lives Matter on a Facebook post and you know the history of that and the current history around the Black Lives Matter movement is known globally now and Alicia is actually a very proud queer person of colour who actually really brings herself to the fight for race equality globally and particular in America and you may know a lot about the last figure here so this is Alan Shoring who was an English mathematician, uh, a mathematician and computer scientist who actually strived the way with some of his innovative ideas and actually was so oppressed around his homosexuality. He was a gay man. And again, um, we've learned a lot as a country and as a world around striving for equality because of the oppression that Alan suffered. Um, and um, Alan actually ended his own life because of that oppression. But for me, it's thinking about your own model, uh, your own role models in the LGBTQ plus community. You may already have your role models. I have got many. I have got many. 
Um, but they're just an example of some of those influential figures who have made a huge change for our community. Next slide, please. So this is about social change. So as well as influential figures, actually there's groups that form and come together and actually try and make political and social change. And, and I've focused on the UK for this. So what did you think about? When do you think the first ever gay, gay, gay pride was in the UK? And some people might think that was quite recent, but actually if we click on that, it was actually in July 1927. So right back in the 20s, people were fighting for equal rights and an equal voice across our country. And that's amazing because now actually we have so many Pride events. At the moment, I'm planning to actually take part in many Pride events just across Greater Manchester. We have at least 10 Prides now and we also have a Sparkle event to celebrate our transgender and non-binary community. But that's when it started for us in the UK, it was in 1927. And if we, um, then we've got um, Stonewall. So Stonewall, as I mentioned before, actually Stonewall UK was, is an EDI provider fighting for the rights of our community. And they were established in 1989 as a part of um, fighting back around Section 28. So and we're partners now as the combined authority um, with Stonewall. So we do a lot of stone uh, work with Stonewall each year. Um, I was nominated Stonewall Role Model of the Year a few years ago, which was amazing. Um, but we also do, we give them evidence once a year around our progression around LGBTQ rights in the workplace. And actually this afternoon, I'm going to have the, the results of our latest submission. So I'm very excited about that. Next uh, date. So Black Lesbian and Gay Centre, the first Black Lesbian and Gay Centre opened in 1982. Um, and that was actually, if we look at that interconnection around our LGBT community, you know, we have disabilities, we are Black, we are multi-faith. Um, we are women, we are men, um, we're old, we're young. So actually we have to look at that cross section around our identities in our community. And this was a really powerful force, the Black Lesbian and Gay Centre, which opened. And the George House Trust has been providing AIDS and HIV support and advice services since 1985. And I mentioned Section 28 and at the same time, there was a huge, um, kind of social media on the TV really at that time um, that I thought was it really, really fr frightened our community around AIDS and HIV and many, 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 many people lost their lives. It's a very different story today around the HIV pandemic. Uh, there's lots of medication now and people live healthy self lives um, with uh, the HIV um, um, it, with HIV and then we've got the George House Trust and then we've got the LGBT Foundation, sorry, LGBT Foundation was established in 1975 and it was established in Manchester. It's now got support services um, in many other um, places across the UK including London and hopefully Liverpool as well in the future and I'm a trustee now at LGBT Foundation it was established in 1975 and I wanted to give something back now that I'm older and uh, I'm more confident. So I now sit as a trustee on the board for the foundation uh, to support the amazing work that they do for our community. Next slide, please. So this brings us to the present date, really. So this is about LGBTQ experiences today and there's an estimated 215,000 LGBT people in Greater Manchester and that's about the size of Rochdale. So on some of the current issues is about conversion therapy. You may have heard this or read some of it, something about this on social media, but it's actually still legal um, for LGBTQ people in the UK to be subjected to conversion therapy. And this is done by professional people um, to try and change people's sexual orientation and change their gender identity to normalise and mainstream people to be heterosexual. 
and to be binary, to be male and female. And actually, it's it's quite a really archaic kind of uh, intervention for individuals. And so there's been a really big consultation and a fight back for the government to actually ban conversion therapy. So 70% of people have been offered or undergone conversion therapy. And the UK government, as I say, they're consulting now to try and stop this archaic act. Next um, section, please. I wanted to put some education information in here as well. And so for me, among um, young people, 47% said they experience of LGBT at school or college was good. And that's amazing today to think that nearly 50% of our family in school, young people actually feel good about their experience in school. 41% say their experience is neutral. So actually that's that's a lot of young people, isn't it? That's 88% of people actually have a good experience in, in school and college, which is brilliant. In higher education, students tend to be more open, in, um, increasing from 64% at school and college to 82% in university or college. And if we think about why that is, um, it'd be really good cool to think that is because maybe some young people are leaving home, they feel more independent, they're growing older, they feel stronger about their own identity, they feel more confident to ask for help and support. But still 13% of students uh, are still uncertain about um, coming out about being LGBTQ plus in higher education. Next slide, please. And I couldn't have gone away today without mentioning the impact of COVID. We've all been through COVID together. We've lived at home, we've work, worked at home, we've studied at home. And I'm sure we've had lots of our individual struggles as well in the workplace. We've missed our friends, we've missed our colleagues. And so for me, it was really important to share some of the hidden figures report from LGBT Foundation. So this was a survey that went out across the whole community to ask about the impact of COVID on them. And this is the most recent support. So 42% would like to access support for their mental health at this time. And we know, don't we, from listening um, to the news and listening to each other, that actually there's been a huge impact on our mental health. And that's for everybody. So actually talking about your mental health is so important at this time to reach out for support to teachers, uh, to tutors, and, and to each other. 18% of our LGBTQ plus community are concerned that this situation is going to lead to substance or alcohol misuse. And again, that's one of our huge fire risks um, as well, alcohol and um, substance misuse. And it deeps down, it goes, it even it increases more for our BAME LGBT people, for people with disabilities and for trans and non-binary people. So there's a massive impact there on how people are trying to survive uh, the, the, the impact of the pandemic. Next, please. So 30% of people are living alone at this time, and this rises to 40% for people over 50 plus. 25% would like uh, support um, to reduce their isolation. So isolation has been a big um, factor um, with our pandemic. 8% don't feel safe either. So you can imagine if you may have recently come out as LGBTQ plus and you're actually isolated and you've got to stay in your bubble at home and your parents and carers actually uh, don't, don't um, agree with you at that time, you can feel really unsafe or you might be with uh, an unsafe partner as well. And 64% said so they would rather receive support from an LGBTQ plus specific organisation. Next slide, please. One thing I did at the start of the pandemic was reach out to the Proud Trust. The Proud Trust uh, supports LGBTQ plus young people in Greater Manchester. They've got a beautiful new centre now in Manchester. Um, so if you want any more information about that, please reach out. Uh, and what we did together, we designed a poster. And this poster was shared with um, LGBT plus networks across the UK to share around the impact or how to stay fire safe at home. 
And it was really important as more young people self isolated and you spent an increased amount of time in, at home, it was more important than ever to keep fire safe. So thinking about how much more time you were cooking at home, how much more time you were heating your home, using electrical appliances and lighting candles. And if I think about electric appliances, I'm just thinking of my own daughter, hair straighteners left on beds, laptops on beds overheating or chargers staying um, plugged in overnight are all fire risks that we really want to increase awareness about staying fire safe in the home. And there's plenty of ways you can keep safe. So again, I can share that poster and lots more information as well after this morning around staying safe. Next slide, please. So for me, I wanted to ask, what are some of the ways you can show allyship to others? I think it's really important to look at allyship. So I am going to give you a mo one moment because some some of you might actually want in the in the put something in the chat box about how you can be an ally to the LGBTQ plus community. How can you show your support? If you can give it one more click as well, just as a prompt. So at the top of the town, ha, uh, hands here, it's about committing to being an active bystander and challenging anti-LGBTQ plus language, language and behaviour. How can you show your support? And we're just waiting for a few messages to come in the chat box. Sorry, Jack, there might just be a short delay, obviously, if um, students are giving questions to put up by, by the teachers, possibly. Right, OK. Well, while you're typing away, I can actually, if we go to the next slide. Because I can have a look at those later. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. So this is a slide about allyship that I really wanted to put in here. It's a little video and it's from Netflix and it's from um, um, workers and employees at Netflix. And I think we all know about Netflix during the pandemic. I'm sure we've all watched many, many programmes or done a lot of gaming at home in between our studies, uh, I might add. So I just wanted to show you this little video. Thank you. I don't think it's come on live, has it, on the slides? Just bear with us a sec, Jack, because um, Michaela's just having a look at it. Just bear with us, everybody. We won't be long. Thank you. It's not looking like we're able to load it from our side, I'm afraid, Jack. So I don't know whether you're able to not. share it. Would you be able to let us have the link for it and we can make sure that everybody that's on the call has the link to maybe have a look at it themselves, if that's possible? Yeah, we can do that. That's not a problem. Um, that's great. Yeah, we'll do that. Along yeah. with any of the other links that we've put in the, the Q&A, we'll make sure that everybody has um, the yeah. option to see that. We'll also just um, for everyone's awareness and yours included, Jack, we'll put it on our GMAX website so people know where they can go and look for it if we don't get it actually directly today. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, just to explain a little bit about the video is about people showing how to be an ally and how they support each other and others as well in the workplace and within their own families. Um, so it's quite a powerful uh, short video to watch. So apologies about that. Next slide, please. So I'm actually giving you some tips here as well um, around allyship. And I think it's really important. These are just some examples. There's many, many more things you can do to step up to be an ally. And an ally is someone who actually supports others and respects others, no matter how different they are to you. Um, and so this is about 
one thing that I did was introduce myself with my pronouns and that actually is really inclusive and welcoming to others. Um, so you could introduce yourself with, with your pronouns. And again, we don't have to force anybody to use pronouns. It's, it's an offer. It's about having a choice. So introducing yourself with your pronouns, I think, is really powerful. And it's just a really quick thing that you can do. Um, it takes a while to get used to doing it. And again, you can research it a little bit more yourselves, but pronouns really do matter. And again, talk about current topics. If you look at the news or social media, there's always a topic around equality, di uh, diversity or inclusion in the news. There's lots of current topics that we that you can look at and talk to your friends um, in school or college. And it's really important to challenge any derogatory or comments or banter. And again, I know you need confidence to do that, but if something doesn't feel right, if someone says something that's putting someone down because of their gender, because of their race, because of their sexual orientation, because of their disability, it's really important that we call it out and we feel confident to do that. And again, if you're not sure about calling it out there and then, maybe go and discuss it with a, a teacher or a tutor. Um, so actually, you can look at um, the teachers and tutors can look at that. And it's not about blaming or pointing fingers at people, but it's about we need to challenge. We need to call out anything that really undermines somebody else because how can we move forward together to be truly inclusive? And also by calling it out, you might actually educate someone. So if you do a little bit of research, you might say, actually, don't use that term, use this term instead. Or if someone uses banter like, oh, you're really gay, which is quite um, quite a usual thing that I hear. Um, then again, it's like, don't use it because it's very demeaning to use it to call someone uh, that name. Um, it's more be very proud about being gay. It's not about using it as a slur. And it's really important to listen to friends or family members who want to talk to you about LGBTQ plus issues or concerns. I think the first thing I, I feel is I feel honoured if someone wants to talk to me about coming out or any issues they have about their family and friends or themselves. I think thank you for choosing me. Thank you for trusting me and reaching out to me first. So I think it is an honour and privilege if someone wants to talk to you and be really clear that you'll support them. And if you don't know what support to give to them, maybe just be a listening ear. I think that's really important and just be there for them. Explain why equality and inclusion is important to you. And you might have not even really thought about this, but take that away. Why is it important to you? Why does it matter? And actually, if it doesn't matter, Think about that. Why, why doesn't it affect you um, when it should affect all of us? So that's something to think about. But I think one of the fun side is to recognise and celebrate diversity. Look at ways of being more inclusive. Go to your local Pride events. See if you can volunteer on a stall. See if you can just attend and take some friends with you. You know, we can all show our support for our LGBTQ plus community. It's really important. Next slide, please. I've just put some of the um, some of the wonderful support services and agencies that we can go to and reach out to. Uh, they are the professionals. They have the lived experience. And these are just an example. There's many more networks that we can reach out to for support. So we've got schools out that I've mentioned before. We've got Rainbow Noir and we've got um, Colours Youth Network. Um, quite new to Greater Manchester. Rainbow Noir as actually is more established, but Colours Youth Network is a newly established uh, support service for uh, young people of colour. We've got Mer Mermaids, which is for trans and non-binary young people to offer support. We've got our very own Proud Trust in Manchester. We've got some brilliant um, services and support networks across Greater Manchester. So I'm very proud of living and working in this space. We've got Trans Forum for older trans uh, gender people. And there's so many others. We've got Biphoria, which is there as a bisexual space and a voice for people who identify as bi. So again, Google is our major friend, isn't it? We can find all these support networks 
but I can quite gladly make sure that you have that information. Thank you. Next slide. So this is a little bit about me. I mean, I started off as a community safety manager for eight years in the fire service. And before that, I was a youth and community worker. And I always dreamed of actually doing a quality, diversity and inclusion as a full time job where it was always something that I did in my own time. I did it as a volunteer, um, as a trustee. I'm also one of the panel members for the LGBT advisory panel for the mayor, Greater Manchester. And so me, I just think um, your dreams are all possible. This was my dream two years ago and I did get this role and it's amazing. So I just wanted to open up to see if there's any questions that you want to ask. Uh, and thanks for coming today. It's a huge pleasure to be here. Oh, thank you. That was absolutely amazing. Really, really interesting and so insightful. Lots of things there that I didn't know about that I'll certainly be taking away and thinking about in a bit more detail, Jack. So thank you. Um, yes, we have had one or two things. One one particular thing that's come up from um, a particular school in North Manchester. They wondered if you could say a little bit more and if we could maybe go back to the slide where you were talking about allyship. Yeah, we do that. Yeah, definitely. I can talk about allyship again. We've missed the video and I think one thing I've done to bring allyship alive in the workplace is we um, we've engaged our EDI SPOC network and that is anybody across the workplace can attend um, that network. We meet uh, once every two months, bi-monthly, and we run workshops on education. So one thing an ally can do is actually educate yourself. Um, so instead of going to that particular group that you're interested in, try and educate yourself a little bit more, do a little bit more reading, a little bit more research. So actually you're increasing your own knowledge as an ally. Um, so that's really important to do. The other thing is an ally is actually, again, as I said about challenge and how to support others in school or in college. How do you do that? And I think some of our allies as well, what we have is a count me in pledge. So people sign a pledge to their commitment to being an ally in the workplace. And then we give them a gift, um, which you can see I'm wearing a black and brown rainbow lanyard. Um, so we give them a gift of an inclusivity pin and a lanyard. So actually we offer a range of gifts to people that sign up to be an ally. So it's keep yourself educated, increase your awareness, and talk about inclusion. Make sure it matters to you and it matters to your friends. Um, it's a part of our, all our lives. You can also set up a network and being really radical now in your school or college. Do you have networks already for particular groups? Um, join those networks. Have you got an ally network? Would your school or college help you um, establish a network for yourself so that you've got that space to come together to talk more about allyship, maybe even a, an inclusive book club, but actually look at particular topics um, to read books and then talk about those books together in a book club. So there's lots of ways um, arrange to take your school to a pride event. You know, make that happen. Um, and I think that would be really supportive of schools and colleges to represent their schools or colleges at the Pride events that now we've come out of lockdown that may happen across Greater Manchester in 2022. So I hope that's um, helped with some examples. That's great. Thank you so much, Jack. Sorry, I'm just struggling a little bit with the battery here. I hope my battery doesn't die. Um, yeah, no, that was amazing. Thank you so, so much. Um, that was. I've not got any extra questions here, really. Um, just to sort of reiterate the point that um, Michaela and I have been putting quite a few additional links to support some of the organisations that young people can go to for extra support. Um, obviously, again, sort of like the information that we've talked about, GMAX is always a good spot for young people to go and be able to navigate and basically, um, you know, get what they're looking for. And obviously just reiterating the fact, you know, if they really feel like they need to talk to somebody or someone they can confide in to find that kind of that go to person that you're com confident about speaking to, whether that's a form tutor, whether it's And I think that's really important, isn't it? Actually find someone that you can confide in, 
find someone who is supportive in your school or college and it might be um, a friend who's actually really confident about being now in school or college it might be a tutor it might be a teacher who actually is a really visible ally in that space um, but there'll be a lot of support mechanisms the most important thing is self-care the most important thing is to keep talking don't go in isolation because actually that can you can really overthink um, find someone to talk about your identity find someone to talk about your struggles uh, but please don't suffer in silence um, so a problem uh, shared is a problem halved as the old term goes thanks Jack it's Michaela here sorry Claire's um Claire's uh, battery, um, she's had an issue with a laptop. Um, we've just got one other question. Um, I don't know if you can see um, the chat, Jax, but it's um, a question that's coming from a young person and it's around the support networks that are in place um, for young people who, um, from the LGBTQ plus community who feel unsafe and if there's anywhere um, that they can go to in Manchester for support. Yeah, absolutely. I think your first go to place is the Proud Trust. Um, you can find all their details or I'll make sure that the details are here. They're specifically for young people who want to ask questions, who are, question, uh, are questioning their own identity. Please reach out to the Proud Trust. They're an amazing organisation. Um, it's run by dynamic youth workers. Um, a lot of the young people, actually, a lot of them have struggled. Um, I'm about to take a proud future student uh, next week who's going to be shadowing me for two weeks and that's to really support them with their mental health and build their confidence up um, hopefully for that future journey of getting employment. So my first go to would be the Proud Trust um, and we've also got the Colours Net Network, Colours Youth Network as well in Manchester that's been established. So again, for young people of colour, that's a really dynamic place uh, to go to for support. And we've also got Mermaids, which is a national charity um, for young people thinking about their gender identity. And then so they're three really dynamic uh, places that I, I would definitely reach out to su su for support. Um, yeah, they're there to help you. Brilliant, thanks Jack. Um, we haven't had any other questions come in, um, so I don't know if there's anything that you want to add before we finish today. No, just keep on celebrating, keep attending events like this, um, keep learning. I think that's the most important thing. Keep on learning. Um, I'm still learning. Um, we never stop learning. And I just want to say a huge thank you to your tutors, to your teachers. The amount of work they do behind the scenes for you is just amazing. Um, and I think you're wonderful as young people as well. So no, thanks for joining us today. Thanks Jack. So that's everything from us today. So on behalf of Jack's Greater Manchester Combined Authority and for all the young people, teachers, parents that joined us today, we just want to say a huge thank you. Please um, continue to listen to all of the live sessions that we have throughout February, not just for LGBT um, History Month but for also National Apprenticeship Week and we've got lots of sessions coming up in March to celebrate National Careers Week and British, British Science Week as well so please do keep a lookout for those. We will circulate after this session the slides for you to um, watch again um, as well as the video that we weren't un we were unable to play and we'll also circulate um, a session card with some further activities that you can um, take part in. So we will circulate those to everybody that joined us on the call today so please look out for those. So on behalf of Jack myself, Michaela, my colleague Claire and everyone at Greater Manchester Combined Authority. Have a wonderful afternoon and we will see you all soon. Thank you. Bye bye.